What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to go over, well, a recap of me in the uh, 2K tournament. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, this video is going to be titled something like, I won the qualifier because I'm recording this before. But anyway, I'm, this is the team I'm going to be running with. I've got T-Mac at the 1, Mo Peterson at the 2, Larry Bird at the 3, Chandler Parsons at the 4, and Jared Jeffries at the 5. I've got a very specific tactic, which is why I'm running this team. We've got Eddie Jones off the bench at the 1, Clay at the 2, Jared Walsh at the 3, Larry Johnson at the 4, and Ray for the 5. This is really weird because this team... Um, I'll change coach. And for some reason, when an Emerald coach goes up to a 97 overall, and Dwayne Casey goes back to 96. And uh, when I made this team, it was a 94 overall. So I don't know what way 2K are messing with overalls, but it's kind of weird at this stage. But um, yeah, so this is the team we are running with in this game um, for this tournament. And... All these games will be post-commentary because um, I just want to focus on the game. I don't want to focus on commentary. So anyway, now let's get on to the games. So game number one, we're playing against a decent enough team whose overall is actually too higher than us. And for some reason, their overall is back down at 95. I really don't know how this works, to be honest. So to start this game off, we uh, it didn't start well. So we call a timeout, obviously, to set up our offense. But then this guy almost run well, runs out a lot of timeout. And then he goes and pauses and runs out the majority of his pause. And I was thinking maybe it would be for defensive settings, but nope, he didn't change any defensive settings. He just sat in the pause menu, which is really frustrating. So we already start off. It was five past six by the time we literally start off this game. Starting off, we go through Jared Jeffries a lot with this team. He is the main man in the squad. And we start off on fire. We just hit everything to start the game. Obviously, the first minute or two, we don't do well. As soon as we hit that first basket, it just begins just be a complete takeover. We can see the few baskets, but I'm all good with that. We abuse our speed mismatch. They've got two legit bigs in there at all times. And we just start burning him. There's a reason we're running guys like Larry Johnson on the team. There's a reason we've got guys like Chandler Parsons. So that they can spread the floor and also act as primary ball handlers. Look, friends actually burns Kyle Anthony Towns there, which was crazy. But then he calls a timeout. And, uh, which isn't a big deal. We go and... Get a stop here, I think. Yep. We force Mahmood to miss a jump shot. We get a stop. We pat, uh, get it to Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones uh, hits uh, Ray for France in the cut. And they call another timeout. So that's even more time wasted. We were at a serious disadvantage. Well, if we were going to win it, obviously, I'm uploading this video, so I'm not still in the competition. But um, it was really annoying at the time because I felt like I could have, after this game, been one of the top players, even initially in the world anyway. But, um... A bad miss there by Porzingis, and to be fair, like, my little guys rebounded well. I'm not going to say anything bad, they rebounded well, as Eddie Jones goes and hits the three. But, um, this was just, uh, this was just a mismatch. The guy I was playing was really, I'm not going to say he was bad at the game, because in general he wasn't, but in terms of, like, like being, like, the good player, the really good players, the top 1%, he just isn't that, to be honest. But, um, I just abused that. And as the game went on, I noticed he actually just played off ball exclusively with one of his bigs. And no matter what, he never switched onto a guard. So I used that to just blow by his bigs so often in this game. But um, yeah, we only have a 13 point lead at this stage with two minutes to go into third. And I'm really thinking this is a game that I can really, really abuse him. So I just do what I always do. I start attacking with my uh, undersized centers and we just take it, take over from there. Everyone's pushing the floor now. Uh, Bo, Larry Bird, and Jar Jeffries heating up. And we actually go in with a 24-point lead going into the fourth. Quite a big lead, but to be completely honest, I didn't think that, that was enough to be anywhere near the top in the world. So um, in the fourth quarter, we just abuse the fact that this guy's jumpy. He's getting destroyed. He's jumping at everything. So all we have to do is just get the ball inside. He's going to play poor defense. He's going to jump on stuff. And that just allows, allows us to completely abuse him in this fourth quarter. In the end, like, we just hit so many shots. They left us open. And, like, I know I shouldn't be full court pressing. You think, obviously, sportsmanship. But in this tournament, I have been the looker shot a bit who won it last week. Every point matters. So, um, I need the full court press. And I honestly thought that a 39-point win against a team that was better than my team overall-wise... His team was a 98 overall, mine was a 94 overall, so it was a lot better. I thought that would get me at least 300 points, but no, I got 271. Like 271 points per game is not going to win you this competition. And I can't believe it, but 
actually will need like if i won every game by 39 points against a better team i still wouldn't even be close to winning this competition i don't know what way the points work and i don't know how i only got 270 for that game so game two we actually came up against a really really good squad and um honestly i was thinking i was a little bit worried i was a little bit worried but um something really weird happened that i don't think i've seen on console before this is really common on pc but and this literally came up a problem was encountered that uh, prevents gameplay from continuing this game will not be counted so basically that just meant i wasted two minutes of my time waiting for the game about three minutes of my time in the game so i wasted about 10 minutes which meant realistically i had no shot at all in this tournament after that happened but um yeah so we went on to game three anyway because maybe if i won every game blew people out i might have had, might have had a chance but then we come up against this squad we come up against the best slash cheesiest lineup you can come up against his point guards were grant hill and Karelenko, and he had galaxy opal wilt i realized he was another one he exclusively played off ball defense with wilt it did not matter but that's all he did so we just abused that we just abused the fact that it was evident this guy couldn't actually play any on ball defense at all so we just started using Jeffries, just like we have in previous games. Although Jeffries did miss that shot there. And it just kind of shows the strength of his team. Like, a contested uh, long two with a cold page that can still go in. But um, this is basically what we did. He full court pressed, so we inbounded to Jared Jeffries every time. And we just tried to blow, either blow by him or wait for a cutter to come through. His full court press really wasn't working. So, like, a lot of the times when he was getting scores, I was easily, easily breaking in the press. And this guy didn't have a plan B. He was just, he was pressing no matter what. And it was the same, like, he tried to switch Duncan onto Jeffries, and Duncan couldn't do anything either. Um, and I'm not saying that those guys can't defend Jeffries. They both can easily. It's just that this guy really wasn't great. Um, not bad at the game. He hit a lot of shots, but it was more so a team advantage. His, uh, his defense was very, very poor, as has been evident so far. So, yeah, we actually have the lead at the end of the first against the single best team you can come up against in my team. So, I was feeling good. And then this happened. So basically, I tried to press or one square to give it to Gerald Wallace, but instead of switching to Gerald Wallace to move him in the right position, uh, LaFrance just threw straight out of bounds. And then, yeah, we have some good moments in this quarter, but the second quarter was really where I felt we lost the game. Where I felt really, I felt really in control in the first quarter, the second I just didn't. Even though, score otherwise, it wasn't the biggest deal. We had some great moments in the second quarter, and this was ridiculous as well, like... Gerald Wallace, who just sprinted down the floor, decided to stop in a dime instead of go for a dunk. But to be fair, um, he did make up for the next play and then goes and turns it over to play right after. So some really sloppy plays by me. And this is where I felt I let him way too much into the game. Like, as you can see, this guy's missing a lot of shots. He really, like, there were times where this guy was really struggling, but I didn't punish it. Second quarter was this was a weak enough quarter for this guy as well, but I was just so bad. Another sloppy turnover that it led him to gain full control of the game. We, I think we contested that one quite well. Like, I don't think there's much more we can do on defense with that type of shot. But, um, again, does not know how to play on-ball defense. We burn him with Larry Johnson. Same thing again, except this time... Actually, no, Larry gets the dunk. Um, we hit a nice contested shot there with Rafe LaFrance. So, like, the end of the second quarter, to be honest, like, two points down. Not the biggest deal in the world, like, but looking back on it looking back in this game we could have easily been six eight up at halftime and it would have been a different ball game then they had a really tough shot of Peja there and then like again it's just abusing him with Jared Jeffries who goes against the arm one Jeffries is up on the line and Jeffries this time actually from this arm one converts and hits the free throw with a green light so suddenly it's a tie game again they go on a little bit of a run and Jeffries puts a stop to it and Wilt goes and blows a dunk he tries even with those 17 Hall of Fame badges he can't dunk on three people they leave Mo Peterson wide, wide open, and he's not missing that. Not even the Emerald Mo Peterson. He forced a terrible shot with Dan Issel, and T Mac is actually the first person to break to the ball. So, halfway through the third quarter, we have a two point lead. And then we get him with the zigzag. This guy can't play any defense. And then, with a chance to tie it, Larry Johnson misses the wide open dunk. And then Rafe LaFrance goes and misses the mid range shot. That's a terrible, terrible kick out as well, though. But LaFrance makes up for it um, a couple of plays late, or next play, and he nails a three. So it's a one-point game now, 3.36 to go in the quarter. So, like, it's still looking like anything can happen. We were constantly switching between zone and man because either one of the two, we couldn't really do anything. Again, I thought that was decent in test, but uh, fortunately, we, we didn't get it. 
Going a little bit of 2k18, stop start with Larry Johnson as he gets a score and a huge three pointer from Rafe LaFrance, making it a one point game. They have a two point lead as we go by them, and it's an M1 for Jared Jeffries with his 22nd point of the game. And from the free throw line this time, unfortunately, Jared Jeffries cannot hit it. They go and fail Jeffries' next play, and this time he does step up, he greens the first free throw. And then he goes and hits the second free throw, giving us a two-point lead with 30 seconds to go. We switch off completely on defense, but I'm okay with that. They're in the press, which means we're probably going to get a really good shot. Every time they did run the press, I just inbounded it to Jeffries, a center, and we scored the majority of the time straight after they did. We get a great pass to Larry, who's wide open, full white. Equalizer is a myth, lads. Equalizer is a myth. That's all I'm going to say. It is a myth. There's definitely momentum in the game, but the equalizer that people think that lower rated squads automatically play better, that is a myth. As someone who plays with all the different squads, it's not true. Duncan, not a shooter. We're finally leaving him open. They should have kicked it out the pierce there. I could, I just noticed that there. When I'm talking about this, they should have ended this in regulation. In overtime, they go and hit a contested shot. And we just, we kind of half go into a little bit of, bit of a panic here. And we inbend the ball straight to Grand Hill. They call a timeout. We go out with the bench lineup and just look at the way Clay Thompson plays defense. I'm trying to bring him back into position. He's not doing anything. Then he goes right back to guard Wilt for some reason, leaving the shooter wide open. And that's all she wrote. That's a loss. And it's a very, very annoying loss in a game I think I could have won.